Hello everybody, welcome back to the next chapter of my PLC basic course. In the last video we created the program for a training system. We used the programming languages of ladder logic, function block diagram and SCL. At the moment our project is still just a file on our computer, but we are about to change that now. Our goal for this video is to connect the computer to the PLC and transfer the project to the controller. This is called a download. In the next few minutes I will explain exactly how to do this. The first step is simple. We need to physically connect our PC to the PLC. Each device has a LAN port and with a standard network cable we can connect them. Here is what it looks like. If your laptop does not have a LAN port, you can use an adapter or a docking station. However, as a PLC programmer, I would personally only recommend laptops with a real LAN port. The next step is a bit more challenging. We will set the IP addresses for our computer and the PLC. The IP address is essential for devices in a network to communicate with each other. As a comparison, imagine a room full of people. If you want to talk to someone, you need to call them by their name. An IP address is essentially the name of a device in a network. This name must be unique, because it is the only way the devices can clearly identify each other. The IP address of the PLC will be 192.168.0.1. This is the default IP address automatically set in the device settings of the TIA portal. Of course, you can also use a different IP address if you want to. Our computer is also part of the network and needs its own unique IP address. I have chosen 192.168.0.99. You will notice that the only difference between the two IP addresses is the last part. This is called the host part. The other sections are called the network part. The ratio between the network part and the host part is defined by the subnet mask. The sections containing 255 are the network part. The section containing 0 is the host part. As a beginner you don't have to memorize all of this. What is important is that the host part of our IP addresses, the last section, must always be different. Alright everyone, here is what we are going to do now. In the first part we will set the IP address of our computer. In the second part we will set the IP address of the PLC. And in the last part we will transfer the project to the controller. Let's go! Here you can see my desktop. To avoid any issues during the download, I recommend assigning a static IP address to your computer. Click on the Windows icon and open the settings. You can set a static IP address under Network and Internet. We are connected to the PLC via Ethernet. Please make sure your CPU is powered on and the network cable is properly plugged in. By clicking on Edit we can assign a static IP address to the device. The version our PLC needs is called IPv4. Here we enter the IP address for our computer along with the subnet mask from the settings in the TI portal. Now click on save. We can see that the IP address has been successfully applied. The PLC and the computer communicate through this interface. The name of the interface depends on the manufacturer, so it might be different on your system. We need this information shortly, so I will quickly take a screenshot. Now let's jump into the TIA portal. 
Next, we will check if the PLC is accessible from the TA portal. Open the tab Online Access and look for the name of the interface from your network settings. My computer and the PLC communicate through this interface. As mentioned earlier, the name of this interface might be different on your system. Now I will use the TI portal to display all the accessible devices on this interface. One accessible device is found. Based on the unique MAC address, I can identify that this is my PLC. When you set up a new PLC, it does not have an IP address. The controller is only identifiable by its globally unique MAC address, which is printed on the device. The range of functions is limited in this case. Our next task is to assign the correct IP address to the CPU. To do this, click on Online and Diagnostics, Functions, and assign IP address. Here we enter the IP address and the subnet mask from the device settings. If I do another scan now, the PLC should be accessible with the correct IP address. Wonderful, that worked perfectly. The PLC and the PC now have the correct IP addresses. This also unlocks additional functions and diagnostic options for us. Here you can see important information, for example, the current firmware version of your PLC and if the PLC is in run or stop mode. The diagnostic buffer is an important tool when your PLC displays an error. Here you will find a plain text error description along with a possible solution. Feel free to explore the other tabs, however, they are not relevant for us at the moment. Thank you so much for learning PLC programming with me. If you want to take your skills to the next level, visit my website. Join my full online course and start your journey as a PLC programmer. I would love to have you on board. Part 1 and 2 are already complete. Our computer and the PLC have static IP addresses within the same network. Next, we download the project to the controller. Only error-free projects can be transferred to the PLC. To check your project for errors, select the CPU and click on Compile. Oh man, what is going on here? During the compilation, errors and warnings were detected. Warnings are identified by this symbol. They are just friendly reminders from the TA portal which you can choose to ignore. In this case, the TA portal is warning us that our PLC is not well protected against unwanted access. For our training system, this isn't an issue, so we will go ahead and ignore the warning. Unfortunately, errors cannot be ignored. You can recognize them by this symbol. By clicking on the green arrow, you can navigate directly to the cause of the error. Oh, something is wrong here. It seems I forgot to assign the output. I will quickly fix that and recompile the project.
That looks much better. Now we can move on. In the TIA portal you can transfer the entire project or just specific elements. In our case we want to transfer the entire project. To do this select the CPU and then click on download to device. Here you can do another search for reachable devices. Our PLC is already accessible as indicated by its IP address. If you want to be absolutely sure, you can use the blink function to identify the device. I will now select the CPU and click on load. Before we can download the project to the PLC it will be checked for errors once again. This ensures that it is not possible to transfer a faulty project. In our case we receive another warning about the security level but we can ignore it again. The download is now complete. Please click on finish. If we now click on the go online button, we will connect to the PLC and be able to monitor it live. As you can see here, the PLC is still in stop mode. The program will only be executed in the run mode. For this reason we will now start the controller. Alright everyone, we did it! We successfully loaded the project into the controller and started the PLC. We will save everything else for the next video. I'm really looking forward to it. See you soon! Thank you so much for watching. If you are excited to dive deeper into PLC programming, visit my website at plccoach.com. See you in the next video.